Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to continue exploring functions and we're going to identify the intervals for which a function is increasing, decreasing, or staying constant when we're given its graph. So just another useful bit of information about functions is to describe the intervals at which they're increasing, decreasing, or staying constant. And here we're only going to focus on when we're given the graph. What does it mean for a function to be increasing on an interval? Well, it's increasing on any interval x sub 1 comma x sub 2 if for all x values within this interval, as we go from left to right, so when one number is smaller than another, when one x is smaller than another x, the outputs, the, the first output is also smaller than the second output, right? So it just means that the graph is going like this, or like this, just increasing, going up. A function f of x is decreasing on an interval, if for all of these values, so the, when the smaller x value is, uh, has a larger output than the larger x value on an interval, right? So decreasing, meaning it could be going down like that or like that or flatter, that would be decreasing. And a function f of x is constant on an interval where no matter what value, what x value in that interval, the outputs are always the same. So it's just going, it's going to be a horizontal segment or it could be a horizontal line. Okay, so one more piece of information. When we list the intervals, we always use open parentheses. So we always use parentheses. We never put anything in brackets. We're talking about open intervals here. Let's look at some examples. Here's our first example. We want to use the graph to determine the intervals in which this graph is increasing, decreasing, or staying constant. So we notice that this graph uh, has distinct endpoints. It's bound. Um, so this graph starts here on all the way far left we have negative 4 comma 2 then another important point we're going to want to notice here is negative 2 negative 2 and the last important point is our other end point which is at 6 comma 2. okay so we see this cute function has two separate colors we have the green part of it and the red part of it the green part we would say is decreasing because as we go from left to right the graph goes down 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 so that is where the graph is decreasing and is decreasing from the x values of negative 4 to negative 2. So when we're writing the intervals we use the corresponding x values. When we're writing the intervals we use the x values and this one is decreasing as we go from left to right between negative 4, this x value here, and negative 2, this x value here. Then the red segment of this starts at negative 2 and it's increasing, right? It's going up from left to right all the way until we get to 6. This graph doesn't have any constant parts to it, we can just leave that blank. If you're writing this yourself, you're probably not going to be given increasing and decreasing, you just wouldn't write constant, you just wouldn't include it, it would just be increasing and decreasing. Okay, so here are three more examples. I always suggest pause the video, see how you do. Okay, our first graph, we have g of x, and it's given by the equation 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. And let's see, so because this is a cubic, it is extending down in depth for till infinity, negative infinity, and here positive infinity. So the important point to note here is where the graph shifts. We see it's going up, 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 and then it stops right here. So right here is the point negative 1, negative 3. Okay, now it starts going down, 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 down. When does it stop going down? Right here at 0, negative 4. And then it continues to go up. So those are the two important points. And we see here it's going up, 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 and then it, oh, gross. And then it stops, so it stops at negative 1. It stops increasing at negative 1, and it starts at negative infinity, right? Because it would continue going up from the bottom uh, as far down as we can go. It stops at negative 1. It stops increasing at negative 1. Then what happens at negative 1? It's going down, down, down. When does it stop going down? When it gets to zero. So it's decreasing on the interval negative one to zero. Remember when we're writing these intervals, we only use the x values. What happens after zero? It goes up, 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 and it's going to just continue going up. This is a cubic, so there's not any more turns, anything out of the range of the window that I posted on here. Okay, so then we also have from zero to infinity. Again, this one didn't have a constant, we can just leave it blank. Okay, how about the second graph? We have h of x, given by this piecewise function. 
All right, what's happening here? So here it is increasing. Uh, it is increasing since what the pieces were given are linear functions and it says x is less than negative four. That indicates to us that it's going from negative infinity up to negative four. And then what happens at negative four? From negative four to two, it's staying constant. So we would say negative four to two. And lastly, what's happening over here? Now from here at two, it's going down, 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 down. It is decreasing. So it decreases from two to infinity. So we see that here. So you notice the piecewise function, you can kind of make the connection here between what we're given here and a different way of writing that. If we write that in interval notation, it would look like this. If you were to write this in interval notation, well, oh, it's down here, you would see it right here. And if we were to write this in interval notation, you would see that right here. So we see each of those pieces on the points where they're increasing, decreasing, or constant. And that's not necessarily always the case. It just happens because these are linear that that happens. If it, one part of it was a parabola, for example, or a, a part, part of a uh, parabola, part of a quadratic, it wouldn't necessarily follow those exact, but we would see each of those. No, not necessarily. Never mind, I take that back. But it worked out this way, so we'll stick with that. Okay, in our last example, we have a parabola of degree five. And what's happening here? It's going up, 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 it's going up. It's always going up. So when it's always increasing and the uh, domain of this particular function happens to be all reals, we just say that it's increasing from negative infinity to infinity. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, right here in the middle, it clearly isn't going up, up, up. But even though it looks like it might be flat, it actually isn't. It's ever so slightly increasing no matter what. And if you don't believe me, you can try it. You can plug in. So if you look at what these numbers would be, these X values, it looks like it might be like 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. If you plugged those in, you would get slightly different values for each one where 1.5's output would be smaller than 1.6's, which would be smaller than 1.7's. So if you don't believe me, you can try it out. You can plug it in and you'll see that they actually, it is increasing on the entire function. Thank you for stopping by.